Ladies and gentlemen, speaking after Kenneth Clark is a challenge, but I'll try to live up to the challenge. <laughs> and I start with the first challenge, which is indeed that if I'm here today, it's probably simply due to the fact that Belgium is the second largest trading partner within the European <laughs> Union after Germany, not after the UK. <laughs> I hate to do but let me first of all thank uh, the organizers of this Indian summit. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here, really. Uh, we have, as an embassy, a lot of contacts with this community because this community, even though it is a community in London, is a hub for Europe and a hub for Europe very often transiting through Belgium. I make that demonstration later. <laughs> what I would like to do, however, is not to be reductionist, if I may say. That is, go at once at trade figures, investment in what, out what, and so on. But to put that very healthy, intense relationship in trade terms, to put that in a broader political and cultural context. Because that's really the driving force why we have been so successful, you with us and we with you in the past few years. That is that there is a political context as of 1948 when we opened the embassy, once you became independent, and that politically we have always had a keen attention for what has happening in your country. You are the country of the contradictions, it is being said, well, I can tell you, Belgium is a country of contradictions as well. I'll come back to that later on, and that similarity certainly brings us together. But just politically to show you, and I'm not going to make the, a long list of who was where at what time, but just to tell you that, for instance, last month, the 4th of October, your president was in Belgium, has been received both by the king, the new king of the Belgians, King Philip, and the prime minister, that just in a few days, the 23rd of this month, we have a very large trade mission going to India, which will be led by Her Majesty the uh, Princess Astrid, with no less than 300 companies, 23rd to 29, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, New Delhi, all these countries will be covered. And, and that is expressive of a kind of ongoing relationship that we have been building up in uh, the past year. It's not just political and economic, it's also cultural. Some of you may know that right now there is a major European festival going on in Brussels called Europalia. Every two years we pick a country which is then being promoted for its cultural assets for during three, four months. As a matter of fact, it started on the 4th October and it runs through the 26th January. I invite you with urgency to come and see because it's quite spectacular. It's an exceptional festival where every day you can see exhibitions, you can see all kinds of activities. We demonstrate the richness of your culture, not just in Brussels, but in Europe for that matter, because as you know, Brussels is the center of Europe and we are proud of being the center of Europe. And then there are the people, the exchanges between our countries it, just in terms of people, are quite intense. Increasingly, Indian students come to study in Belgium at the top universities. There's a large business community now in Belgium, particularly in Antwerp, where, as you know, uh, Antwerp being one of the major diamond uh, hubs in, in the world, together with Tel Aviv, with indeed uh, Mumbai and other places. So a large community is there. We have uh, instituted new visa facilities. That is, we have opened visa application centers all over the place in India so that the access, the proximity of having access to uh, visa uh, for Belgium is, and for that matter, Schengen area is therefore facilitated. And we have now also increased our diplomatic network in terms of consulate generals all over the country. We have a fast track visa policy. I'm not going to go into much details, but all this just to tell you that Belgium is a country that is, of course, well known as being an open country, but also a country that opens its windows to the uh, external world. Now, on trade, let me briefly give you the basics so that we know what we are talking about. As I said, it, we are indeed very proud that we are the second largest trading partner of India in the European Union, just after Germany. 
uh, exports and imports get closer together, there is a trade gap in terms of uh, to, to our favor, in terms of our us uh, exporting more to India than importing, but the gap is narrowing. Of course, a large part of that trade is uh, in uh, diamonds and gems and jewelries and that kind of things, something like 60%, which also explains to some extent why we have that high uh, trade volume, which is close to 13 billion uh, euros, was 13 billion euros uh, for the last figures of 2000. And 12. So this is a very substantive, very sustained trade relationship that we have. But beyond just the trade, there is also the investment relationship, both inward and outward. Um, again, I'm not going to go over all the details which I have here before me, but let me stress, for instance, that uh, the top five uh, Indian banks all are present in Brussels, in Antwerp, in Belgium, and that ranks us, as a matter of fact, second, because, of course, as far as financial services is concerned, UK, and in particular London, um, has the first place. But again, that shows how important your presence in terms of investments is, and it's not just banks, it's also companies. In conversely, we also have a lot of companies in your country. Um, we. Um, we, the, the inward investment, that is investment coming from India uh, towards uh, Belgium, uh, makes us the, f the fifth um, country for inward investment in, in Europe. Um, I shift uh, some other days, I go over that, but, but let me come to the, the, what I think is the core story of why we have that uh, special relationship and why that has been uh, so much to the benefit of both our countries. I think one of the explanations is that, uh, as some of you know, we are uh, the most open economy in the world. And it's not me who is saying that, it's Ernst & Young in its latest report. There is no more open economy than the Belgian economy. So globalization, trading and working with others is in the very nature of being a Belgian. That is why I meant with the windows open to the outside world. 80% of our GDP is just trade export towards uh, other countries. And that, of course, is something that is due in part to uh, the fact that we are indeed a small country, a medium-sized country, 11 million uh, countries. When I say medium-sized, I don't want to seem pretentious, but I think that when you are in absolute figures, in absolute figures, when you have the 20th place in terms of GDP in the world, then I think you are kind of allowed to say that you are a middle-sized country and not just a small country. We are a middle-sized country in terms of economic power. Should the G20 live up to its proper definition, then normally we should be part of the G20. But we know that the G20 is an other animal than just an extrapolation of the G8, and that, and we totally favor that, it was meant exactly to open uh, that, uh, that cynical, that, that meeting uh, space to other countries, including to your country, and we're quite happy with that. But so again, very open country, and that brings a lot with it in terms of how we look at the world. For instance, multilingualism in Belgium, as most of you know and perhaps have experienced, it's something which we simply have in our genes. When you are being born as a Belgian, you know that by age 18, you will speak two languages at the least. And for those who have been already had the opportunity to come to Brussels, they will simply witness how much cosmopolitan Brussels has now become. I'm not claiming that we are a capital that can be compared to the capital which is the capital of the UK, London, or Paris of New York. My point is slightly different. It is although the size of Brussels is much smaller than London, Paris, and New York, the cosmopolitan nature of the country at least is as cosmopolitan as New York, which I think is the most cosmopolitan of the three countries I mentioned. And where you are just sitting in the metro in Brussels, for instance, just make the experience, close your eyes, 
and try to register the languages that you capture. You will capture a Japanese, you will capture some Spanish, you will capture some Arabic, and of course, French and Dutch, which are the two main languages of the country itself. Now, that multilingualism, and that is my point, is not just a technical vehicle. It's not just because we have been educated as of young age in learning languages. It's also very much in the mentality that is that for us, the outside world is our world. And we have to accommodate and we have to work with them. And therefore, we have to understand the mentalities of other people. And that is why we have that kind of cosmopolitan gene uh, in us. Let me also stress some tangible elements uh, as far as Brussels and Belgium is concerned. You know that we, have, we are the seat of a uh, very important multilateral organizations to start with, of course, the European Union and NATO. We are the strongest regional organizations, both in economic terms and in security terms. We are located at the very center of Europe. You, when you come in in this uh, assembly today, you have a map that demonstrates you where Brussels is exactly located. One hour and 55 minutes Eurostar from London, one hour and 25 minutes from Paris, Frankfurt and all those main countries are within, uh, within a, a radius of 300 kilometers, which covers about half of the European Union population, which is 250 million out of the 500 million, half a billion population of Europe. So we have that kind of rage, centrality of location, and finally, it, there is the, the human factor, if I may say so, which I think is perhaps the most important one, that is that we are uh, well educated in terms of having some very strong uh, universities. I'm always proud to see when the Financial Times comes out every six months with the rankings of the universities, the world rankings of the universities, starting with Harvard and then Yale and what have you, and indeed Oxford and Cambridge, that uh, the Belgian universities are ranked among the 50 best in the world, including the three big universities being Louvain, Brussels, and uh, Ghent universities. So highly qualified universities, Nobel Prize, as you know, together with Professor Higgs, uh, just recently Professor Engler from the University of Brussels got the Nobel Prize for the so-called discovery of the Higgs particle, which we prefer to call the God's particle. But just to show you that we can compete with top universities here in the UK as well. Multilingual, skilled, hardworking people, but Above all, and I close with those few remarks, above all, people who are not presumptuous and not pretentious, we are no-nonsense people. We have the two feet, our, uh, our two feet uh, firm on the ground. We are open-minded, and still we have a touch of imagination. As you know, the surrealist school in, in Belgium with Magritte, ceci n'est pas une pipe, is very symptomatic of the way how we look at the world at large. Some people think that it makes us slightly odd. We think that it is a strength. Let me just conclude by saying that the location, the kind of character we have, the fact that Brussels and Belgium is located on that very important line that kind of separates, not divides, kind of separates the Northern Europe from the Southern Europe. We speaking as official languages Dutch, which makes us close to the northern world of uh, Europe, and French, which makes us then again more close to the Latin part of Europe, that we are just on that line because that line goes straight to Belgium, that that is part of the contradictions I was referring to, and I would agree with all those who say that much more than a liability this is an asset because there are few people in Europe that can have that kind of empathy and understanding of what other people think than we because we are familiar with the, the Latin mentality, we are familiar with the German mentality and we extend that out of the world including understanding the Indian mentality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.